All right, I think we will go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is David Gottfried. I'm the director of the National Nanotechnology Coordinated Infrastructure. Uh, and I wanna welcome you to another episode of the NNCI uh, webinar series this month, focusing on uh, computation and modeling. And in a moment, I'll hand it over to my colleague, Azad Naimi, who's Associate Director for Computation in the NNCI to introduce today's speaker. Uh, before I do that, just a couple of announcements. Uh, we will have, uh, now that the summer is over, we'll be having uh, probably pretty much monthly webinars, and you can see up information about upcoming webinars on the NNCI website, nnci.net. Um, you can also view past uh, webinars on our YouTube channel, and you can find those links also on the NNCI website, or if you just Google uh, YouTube and NNCI, we're usually the first link that'll pop up. Um, we will, of course, entertain questions at the end of today's webinar, and you can enter your questions into the Q&A box at the bottom of the Zoom screen, and then we will get to those uh, at the end. And with that, I will uh, turn it over to Azad to introduce today's speaker. Thank, <clears throat> um, thank you, David. Um, it's my pleasure today to introduce our uh, distinguished speaker uh, for this talk, for this webinar. Uh, Dr. Eric Gickard um, has served as Silvaco's Senior Vice President and General Manager of the TCAT Division since 2012, and also as Silvaco's Vice President of Applications from 2008 to 2012. Uh, prior to that, uh, from 1995 uh, to 2008, he served in various roles with Silvaco, uh, formerly, formerly known as Silvaco Data Systems, as uh, one of Silvaco's wholly owned subsidiaries. Um, the roles included applications engineer and others. Um, Dr. Gickard received an MS in Material Science and a PhD in Semiconductor Physics uh, from Institut Polytechnique uh, de Grenoble from, uh, in, in France. Uh, with that, I pass uh, the podium to Gerhard. Um, please go ahead. Thank you, Asad. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, a pleasure to be, um, to be with you today. and. Um, here is uh, the agenda and um, the bulk of the discussion uh, for today. So we'll, we'll start with, uh, with a background, uh, uh, just a, a little bit of the background on Silvaco. Uh, but really, uh, I'd like to spend a, a few, uh, few minutes on um, talking about TCAD, what is TCAD, why we are using TCAD and uh, the, the challenges you know, uh, that we are facing uh, developing such, uh, such a tool. And of course, then uh, we'll go through an um, overview um, of what uh, we offer, uh, mainly process and device simulation. You, you will see this uh, you know, in a minute. And of course, also uh, how we use those tools. And uh, we go through a different application, uh, power display, uh, CMOS and memory. And we'll uh, finally uh, conclude by um, discussing uh, a potential, potential uh, future, a new concept um, where we uh, where we combine a digital twin with machine learning. So, uh, as promised, um, a quick, uh, a very quick uh, snapshot of uh, of Silvaco. Two hundred and fifty plus uh, employees. Uh, we have uh, we have three business units. Uh, one developing TCAT tools, another one developing uh, EDA tools, and a third one doing soft IP and an IP management. Um, we are really a, a big player, um, especially on TCAD, um, on the, the flat panel display and, and power uh, market segments. We also have a very strong and solid um, research and uh, industrial uh, partnership and uh, end, ending up with uh, 600 plus uh, customers one worldwide, as well as uh, a lot of universities uh, worldwide. Um, we have also a strong and uh, diversified uh, global presence. Um, headquarter is in uh, Silicon Valley in Santa Clara, where we have, um, of course, also uh, R&D and development, but we have also a, a big part of uh, uh, 
uh, uh, R&D deployment in Europe, as you can see here. Okay, so let's uh, jump to uh, to the main uh, topic uh, for today. What is TCAD? So uh, TCAD stands for Technology uh, Computer Aided Design. Uh, TCAD is a branch of EDA, uh, commonly named uh, Electronic Design Automation. But really, uh, what TCAD is is um, you know uh, two things. Uh, the first one is process simulation. The second one is device simulation. And what process simulation is, it's uh, typically uh, uh, the ability to model uh, semiconductor fabrication. Uh, it can be seen also as a virtual wafer fab, uh, allowing engineers to, uh, to simulate um, every single steps happening in a fab, like oxidation, uh, fetching and deposition, and to taxi, CMP, diffusion, and combining uh, all of those steps together, of course, um, we allow the engineer to simulate the fabrication of any devices, uh, part of mature or advanced technology nodes. Um, as I said, uh, TCAD is also device simulation. Device simulation today is multi-physics. Uh, it used to be probably only electrical back then. Um, it's not the case anymore. Uh, it combines uh, thermal, uh, mechanical, optical. Uh, it also uh, simulates ion transport for uh, new emerging memory like resistive RAM, magnetics for MRAM. And um, all these uh, 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 actually uh, uh, physics uh, address the, 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 the different market segment that, that we uh, are segmented here in six different uh, categories mainly display, power, optical, radiation, CMOS, and memory. Okay, so why are we using TCAD? Uh, fundamentally, to reduce development cost and um, of semiconductor technologies. Um, the ITRS roadmap um, indicates that um, well, TCAD simulation can reduce the cost of development cycle by 30%. So that's uh, certainly one of the main reasons, but not, not the only one. Um, of course, uh, we are using TCAD also to uh, to explore uh, uh, new concepts, uh, meaning new geometries, complex geometries, uh, new materials, uh, complex processes. And, and today, uh, um, indeed, uh, novel materials will become highly relevant in many existing and emerging markets. Uh, we'll see this uh, in a minute, but uh, for power, um, it used to be only silicon, and now, of course, um, you know, it's silicon carbide and GAN. Memory, um, all these resistive RAM, MRAM, FE RAM, those new emerging memories, they are using uh, completely different materials compared to silicon and, of course, gas sensor. Uh, an interesting point also related to uh, why we are using TCAD, it's because unless uh, in reality uh, uh, we can visualize uh, internal physical processes. So um, you can see uh, basically inside the device, uh, measurements will tell you what happens, not why it happens. So TCAD provides the why answer. Here is a simple illustration of things related to um, the breakdown voltage, electric field impact ionization, uh, depending on different geometry, on the left hand side, on the right hand side, it's uh, actually the uh, distribution of uh, ions resulting from a uh, Monte Carlo implantation. Also, uh, potentially very useful to see if um, you have some sort of uh, crosstalk between uh, different devices uh, doing such implantation. Um, interesting, also, um, it's what we are calling virtual experimentation. So um, if a device exhibits an unexpected uh, characteristic, you can experiment with uh, various theories in TCAD. If simulation theory matches the measured results, there is a good chance you have found the cause, okay? And, uh, and last but not least, um, it improves internal company communication or even uh, uh, could be used uh, as a very uh, a good uh, 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 training uh, 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 session um, for students and, and engineers. So um, yeah, device modification and their expected effect uh, can be visualized uh, and passed between departments with clarity because you will see in the presentation also uh, 
well, TCAD is not only about physics, it's also about visualization tools, how to analyze the results. Uh, who is using TCAD? Well, today, everybody. So foundries, of course, and uh, IDMs, especially uh, and now it's across the board. When, uh, when foundries process start to become complex, um, and when, of course, running wafer start to cost money and it's time consuming, it's back to what I said uh, in the introduction. And of course, also uh, back to what I said before, when you are emerging technology are in the early phase of the development and to gain, uh, of course, a commercial age. Um, but those are not the only one. Uh, fabless companies, because they want to understand their device better and eventually tune and optimize uh, uh, towards their application. And of course, uh, government, universities, research organization for teaching and for learning and exploring new concepts. What are the challenges we are facing uh, uh, in, uh, in developing, uh, uh, let's say, numerical solution uh, uh, for TCAD? Well, um, the, the first one is that um, th there, is, uh, there is no miracle. So, um, you know, if if uh, if we don't understand the physics, if we don't understand how the device we want to simulate works, there is there is no way uh, a TCAD could be helpful. So, uh, really, the, the 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 challenge is in uh, being able to understand, even uh, for a new concept or a new architecture, what is happening in reality, and and trying, of course, to put this into some uh, sort of a ma mathematical formulation such that we can uh, input this information to the TCAD tool on top of everything else already available in order to have a chance to, uh, to be predictive, okay? Um, today, or let's say in the, in, the, in the last few years, we are also seeing, uh, uh, you know, um, I would say questions or requests um, from, uh, from the community, um, in order to simulate much larger domain size, uh, multiple devices, and of course, 3D simulation. Um, and and uh, the challenge is, is always the same. I mean, at the end of the day, this is, this is always trying to get predictive with, with a reasonable turnaround time. And, um, and usually what we are trying to do is, is to run simulation in a uh, in few hours and, and definitely uh, potentially not days. Okay. Uh, again, uh, you know we have been uh, we have been doing this uh, type of development for quite a long time at Silvaco, so there is a lot of uh, resource available uh, for uh, our users. Um, and look at our website, and um, and you will find uh, I'm pretty sure everything uh, you need if you need uh, more information. All right. So. Uh, it, it concludes the, the first part about uh, uh, TCAD in general. Uh, what I propose we do, we, uh, we move forward and I will explain you first uh, um, the, the TCAD flow that, that we have at Silvaco, and then we'll go through a uh, different application and see what uh, indeed uh, uh, TCAD can bring on the table. So let's start with uh, and discuss, uh, you know, uh, the type of tools which constitute, uh, constitute a TCAD flow. All right, so uh, a TCAD flow today, um, well, should provide solution for, from large scale um, to address mainly the, the power and the display technology to atomistic scale, well, to address uh, advanced CMOS, okay? Um, it, it should also include uh, parameters for novel materials uh, using numerous new devices, uh, as well as being able to cope with um, with complex 3D geometries. So again, uh, bottom line, this is always a compromise between accuracy of the simulation resource and turnaround time. Um, so a generic TCAD solution uh, should also uh, cover mature and emerging technologies. Um, here, as I've seen before, as you have seen before somehow, we split the market in uh, six different uh, segments. Again, display power, memory, optical CMOS, and advanced CMOS. Um, we have solution for all of them. Um, and um, also maybe worth mentioning, um, TCAD uh, obviously known uh, uh, 
uh, to simulate what we are calling front end offline. That that's the the, the first row here, but uh, but it could also be used to 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 calculate parasitic capacitance, parasitic resistance uh, from a, from what we are calling a back end offline, um, which consists of uh, uh, simulating a structure with uh, metals and dielectric. Um, Maybe worth mentioning also, and we will see this in uh, in more details later on. Uh, for very small geometry, uh, namely in nano wire, nano sheet, get all around to the material. Well, classical TCAD solution may not be enough, and um, and should be combined with uh, what we are calling an atomistic TCAD solution. And as I said, we'll discuss this uh, uh, um, a little bit later in the presentation. All right, so. Just a uh, um, few slides to um, uh, dive a little bit more into uh, into process simulation and device simulation. Just again to give you a flavor of of, of what it is, what it means, and what we can do. Um, so so basically, process simulation optimizes the next uh, process generation through virtual fabrication. Okay, um, you can virtually simulate any process steps. Uh, exactly like what is happening in a fab, uh, you know, uh, it's all uh, start from a, from a mask or a layout. Also, uh, exactly what is happening uh, in a fab, and then you do etching, deposition, oxidation, diffusion, etc. And the end goal is to have a virtual representation of your device, including the geometry and the doping, so that you can pass this information to a device simulator and then calculate. Uh, uh, the ID characteristics uh, of of your of your device in the test. Okay. Um, so yes. Uh, um, so basically, device simulation consists as taking as an input, um, well, the structure created from process simulation, and, and solve the continuity and Poisson equation to calculate the current electric field potential, etc. This is this is what we are calling a FEM type finite element uh, uh, method. And you are in fact simulating the performance of your device just as as if you're measuring. Okay, uh, this is really uh, the key here to understand. Um, for for that, you obviously need to capture the the, the physics involved in your device and the test. Um, and those physics usually uh, are related to mobility, carrier transport, ion transport, temperature, quantum correction, light, etc. And um, and, and again, uh, back to what I said before, you need to make sure that you have all these ingredients that are actually sometimes specific to the device you are simulating to get accurate results. So on the other hand, more physics you add, longer the simulation time and possible convergence. So, 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 you, have to, um, so you have to be obviously a, a little bit careful, but because I was also mentioning that um, we were using a a kind of a FEM method, um, you know, uh, in, in the next slide, you, you will see the importance of uh, what we are calling a mesh. A and of course, also uh, uh, combined with this uh, meshing technique, we need to have very uh, robust linear solver to solve all these uh, equations uh, self-consistently, okay? So, so, so why meshing is so important uh, when we are talking about uh, a TCAD solution? It's simply because well, without a, a good meshing engine and, and a good meshing strategy, well, fundamentally, you can run into convergence problem, which means that actually you cannot solve the physical equations you you you, you want to solve, and of course you 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 don't you don't get any any simulation results. Okay, so so today this is this is more and more challenging or more and more important to consider because devices in general have more complex shapes. Um, it, it requires meshing on non-orthogonal non boundaries, um, including a, a junction refinement, uh, a slope sidewall, and, and, and this uh, meshing algorithm sh should, should mesh actually the structure automatically. Um, here we are only seeing pictures in, in 2D, but later on we'll see, uh, of course, uh, uh, a 3D simulation because those type of Meshing, which are actually non non really conventional, um, but very useful, um, you know, uh, could be used, of course, in uh, in two D and in three D. Okay, uh, 
I think it's also interesting. Uh, I think I touched base a little bit on, on that during the introduction. A, a, a silver, um, sorry, a TCAD solution is not is not only uh, is not only the, the, the related to the semiconductor physics or the meshing or the linear solver. You need to have uh, a graphical user interface tools to help you uh, to be more efficient to set up the simulation, to create the input deck, to analyze the result, to do split lot experiments. And, and that's also, uh, uh, again, uh, a part of the, the work we are we are putting together, uh, offering the best possible experience to the users such that it becomes easy or easier, I should say, um, you know, to do a, to do a TCAT simulation. Um, last but not least before uh, going to the application uh, side, um, you know, TCAD is, is, is evolving also. Um, and actually TCAD and circuit design have been, uh, have never been closer to uh, each other. Uh, um, it used to be a time where, uh, well, device engineers, they were not necessarily talking to uh, design engineers. So, so, so fundamentally what I'm trying to say is that um, usually everything stopped at the device level. So, you know, for a, for a simple MOSFET, it's obviously uh, optimizing the VT, the linear current, the drain current, etc. And like I said, uh, nothing else. Um, today, what we see is that um, TCAD is now uh, connecting semiconductor physics to circuit design. Um, this is also also called uh, DTCO for design technology optimization or also a, a shift left concept. And, um, and what it means, in fact, it means that uh, by uh, connecting uh, TCAD to, uh, to circuit design, in fact, instead of just seeing, for example, the impact of process variation into the device performance, you can see process variation um, impact onto uh, uh, circuit performance. And, uh, and this, is, uh, this is really something that, um, people are more and more interested in. And it's not only, uh, I would say, uh, for silicon technology. Um, this is actually very valid for uh, any power uh, uh, devices and even display technologies. So um, I think we we did review, um, even though high level, um, you know, uh, the tools um, that we consider TICA tools. Uh, let's now uh, take a look of uh, what we can uh, what we can uh, use them for. Okay, um, so let's start with uh, with power devices. Um, so, what is the market driver here for power devices? Multiple, but since few years, it's it's mainly driven by the auto automotive market segment, um, electrical cars. Okay. Uh, New materials, SIC, uh, one of them, again, um, is another one, and um, and again, that's really uh, what is driving uh, 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 the, the 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 power market segment. And I have to say also uh, the fact that um, the geometry is is becoming more and more three D in in nature. Okay, so we'll start with um with an example uh, indeed related to um, somehow optimizing the geometry uh, versus like a, a key figure of merit, which is uh, the breakdown voltage of um, of a trans MOSFET. Uh, so, uh, so here what we do, and again, every simulation starts from a layout. So, so we are changing the design or I would say exploring uh, the change of the design, the layout shape, uh, for example, of device corner, and process uh, technology, the sidewall angle, angle, and uh, we um, we uh, we do the simulation just to see, uh, you know, uh, and find the optimum. Okay, so um, as you can see here, uh, we had and we have three uh, different shape, and we end up with three different uh, breakdown voltage. And um, obviously, uh, the, the one that has, uh, you know, this uh, shape where it's, it's smoothing the, the, the electric field distribution 
uh, obviously uh, is getting the higher breakdown voltage. I think it's interesting also to notice that um, something I mentioned already, but uh, if you if you only do a 2D simulation, of course, 2D simulation is much faster to run, but if you only do a 2D simulation, you will miss the point because uh, for this particular device, which uh, is or are 3D by nature, you can't anymore use 2D. So, so that's why, again, uh, um, and you will see uh, that along the presentation. I, I mean, a lot of uh, simulation today, today are, are, are 3D. That's another one, uh, 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 but that's not that's not a, a silicon carbide based uh, technology. This is a silicon uh, a technology, but here, really, this is the complexity of of uh, of the of the of the device. Um, you know, this uh, this trench uh, MOS, uh, 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 indeed, in that case, UMOS, um, is very complex to to process. Um, I would say uh, I was mentioning that um, you can virtually uh, simulate everything that is happening in a fab. The, the, the most complex things to simulate is oxidation because it involves uh, moving fronts and especially oxidation in 3D. Okay. So for that, you are using a special technique or level set. Um, but um, the point I want to make here is that uh, uh, we are we have the ability to, to simulate uh, multiple uh, um, uh, complex uh, oxidation uh, one on, on top of the other and as i was mentioning also here you see the type of mesh uh, we have to use in order to minimize the number of nodes uh, because we also have to think about that the fact that uh, the more nodes you have the longer the simulation so 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 with that you can really uh fully virtually uh, uh i would say characterize or measure virtually the performance of your device and of course because that's the whole purpose you can go back and change something and see if it does improve the performance okay um another power device example here uh silicon carbide again just to say a, a few words on on uh, the challenge when when we simulate silicon carbide because it's wide band gap so you can see here you have very very low currents uh, which we cannot even measure, okay? Um, but the reason we, we have a, actually something really nice and not noisy at all, it's it's because we are using what we are calling extended precision solver. So uh, for anything wide band gap like GAN and silicon carbide, it's known that if you don't pay attention, if you don't use Again, those uh, extended precision solver, which usually are 80 bit, 128 bit, even 160, you will have very noisy uh, curve, and sometimes you don't have any curve because it doesn't convert. Okay. Okay. Uh, moving on. Just looking at the time here. Um, very quickly, the probably the last example for 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 power devices is GAN. So so GAN works a little bit differently compared to silicon and uh, silicon carbide. That there is like uh, some mechanical stress uh, involved, uh, especially between the GAN and the ALGAN layer. It does generate, um, you know, uh, what we are calling polarization, uh, spontaneous or not. And this uh, actually polarization uh, results in a 2D electron gas, uh, just right here, um, under the gate, allowing current to flow from source to drain. So, um, so uh, exactly like uh, silicon carbide, um, you know, uh, you need to uh, to use extended precision solver, and for GAN, you have some uh, actually specific mobility also uh, um, model uh, because again the physics uh, is a little bit different compared to silicon or silicon carbide. Okay. Um, yes. So so also interesting is is the fact that um, you know when you do device simulation, it's it's not only DC. So you can do DC characteristic transient or AC characteristic, and this is especially important for GAN um, because because we have this uh, this concept of uh, current collapse that that is a, a, a of key interest in GAN devices uh, um, because they are used that as a switch switching and uh, amplification modes. Okay, so. Um, Let's move on um, and let's switch a little bit topic. Let's 
take a look at the, the display uh, industry here. And somehow, what is the market driver? So um, I'll summarize, but uh, the display market is, um, well, it's still dominated by the traditional TV and phone consumer market, okay? But uh, infotainment and driver assist display for automotive um, is really starting to play a big role here. Um, and, and within this uh, technology and from a, actually a device point of view, this is all about OLED, micro LED, quantum dot, TFTs. So we'll, um, we'll, keep, we'll, we'll give a quick, uh, quick overview of uh, how we, we simulate those, uh, those devices. So this is this is called the front plane technology development. So um, it's bringing on the table, uh, like I said, uh, uh, technologies like LED, micro LED, LED, obviously completely different compared to a typical MOSFET or or typical uh, power devices. Um, it's obviously non, well, it's not obviously, but it's usually not silicon. It's two C, it's it's three five two six, and also uh, organic materials. Um, Light emission is the common denominator between those devices, okay? Um, but also, uh, again, that's the multiphysic aspect of, of the solution, but we also had to, to drastically change um, the carrier transport because uh, on some of those devices, we are not even talking electrons on, or holes, but we are talking about exciton. So, so especially again, uh, for organic devices. So, so again, uh, same same concept. If you want to simulate uh, a LED, uh, which is basically a LED with uh, organic material, but you don't have the right the right physics, you will never be able to do it. Okay. Um, backplane backplane is pretty standard. It's been around for a long time. This is all about TFT. The novelty really is the different type of substrates for the TFT. Uh, here you can see, uh, you know, uh, you know, poly and grain stuff like that. But really the novelty is, is this uh, flexible substrate uh, driven by the flip phone, obviously. So um, really those, those manufacturers, they are asking us, hey, you know, can you evaluate the impact of, let's say, uh, uh, stress and deformation on, on, the on the IV characteristics such that we can, uh, we can make sure our solution is uh, reliable. And that's, uh, that's all about uh, what we do. And, um, and that's the, 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 the TFT marketplace here. Um, I think an interesting uh, a topic also, uh, it's not necessarily specific to display, but um, it's, it's generic, but it's very useful for display. I'll tell you why in a minute. It's because it's the, this concept of, uh, is doing doing circuit simulation, so small circuit simulation with TCAD accuracy. So, so here you can see we can mix, first of all, uh, uh, TFT and OLED, so front plane technology, back plane technology. But really the key is that, um, because most of them don't have a SPICE model and, and because you want to have very high accuracy when you do circuit simulation, you use a device simulator to do that. But here you can mix Again, optical and non-optical technology uh, uh, in one circuit design, in one circuit simulation, and that's really the the the, the value of this mixed mode approach um, that actually we are offering. Okay, uh, taking on time. Okay, uh, TCAT for CMOS. So um, this could be a webinar by itself, but but I, I chose to go uh, go fast on this one. Um, uh, clearly, uh, you know, uh, planar CMOS is still alive. Okay. Uh, clearly, also, um, you know, with get all around, 3D is is all over the place. It's also clear that now we are talking about nano wire, nano sheet, 2D material. Also, um, so what I decided to do, I, I'll show you an example of FinFET. Okay, in 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 that part, and then we'll talk about atomistic uh, uh, simulation in a minute. Okay. Um, so, so when you do a FinFET simulation, one of the critical aspects is to replicate the shape of the structure as close as possible to the reality because the electrostatic matters the most, okay? So, so I don't want to say that we don't really care about the doping or stuff like that, but, but uh, really when you do a FinFET simulation, you have to have the shape very right, okay? And, um, 
And the best approach to do that, or at least that's what we are using and we have implemented is to kind of mix solid modeling type engine with advanced physics based edging, edging and deposition engine. And it, it guarantees fine detail shape with reasonable simulation time. Okay, so here you have the well module, here you have the fin module, here I have the dummy gate module. Uh, very important, of course, especially for 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 the for the P type. You have this uh, silicon germanium uh, source drain AP module. And fed uh, uh, over a spacer residue uh, simulation, polysilicon and RMD module, and then you end up with your uh, uh, fin fed structure. You know, in in, a, in a, again, reasonable amount of time or simulation time, I should say. But what is also interesting, maybe you did notice, is that we we did simulate only half of it, and that's also the beauty of um, of TCAD. So, um, in order to save time or simulation time, you know, uh, at the process level, you simulate and you, you you try to benefit from the symmetry of of your device. So you simulate here half or quarter. And then you mirror, and then you build the uh, anterior uh, device, and then you go to device and you get your IV characteristics. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So let's um, let's uh, spend a little bit of time on uh, on this advanced CMOS here. Okay. So uh, so what is advanced CMOS? Well, it is it is reasonable to think that. Um, that it is a, it is devices with nanometer scale. Okay, so a fin fed could potentially be one of them. Uh, we see here like a fin with four nanometer at top, four, uh, ten nanometer at the bottom, um, and scaling will continue and um, and will decrease the width and increase the height. Um, you have also nano wire, nano sheet uh, that can be classified as, as uh, nano devices. Um, as such a small dimension. I think what we can ask ourselves, hey, uh, you know, for this nano sheet, uh, is the behavior of this layer here in the middle is the same compared to the one at the top or the one at the bottom? So, in other words, this concept of uh, local behavior starts to happen at those dimensions. Okay, you can't really assume everything behaves completely the same in the device. So the question is then how to simulate such devices. Can we use or continue to use TCAD tools? Or do we have to switch to something else like atomistic simulation? So to try to answer to this question, let's first of all get back to the roots. Um, and let's take a, a look at the Z. So when you look at the Z, the first chapter, it's about energy band, OK, which tell us about the band structure of the crystal. And it is based on this uh, effective mass theory and the effective mass theory is actually what we use what we use in TCAD tools. Everything else, every other chapter, this is more or less about uh, uh, um, transport and, and application. Okay, so um, so let's look. Let's first of all look at this eff effective mass concept. Okay, um, in the effective mass concept, you you concentrate only uh, at the top and the bottom. Um, of the band, not much about the rest. The energy window is very small. You also consider only back material. So in other words, you are making a lot of assumption, a lot of simplification. And the question is, are those simplification too drastic? Should we replace the effective mass concept? The answer is probably yes. And we'll see why in a minute. So um, first of all, replacing by what? So potentially with tight bending or DFT. And why? It's because tight bending, when you when we use tight bending approach to uh, calculate the band structure, actually the band structure depends on the geometry and the stress and orientation. And it's not the case with the effective mass. So um, for example, on the left-hand side, you can see uh, calculation with uh, tight bending of uh, bulk silicon. So it's, very similar to what we have seen before, like minimum, maximum, and uh, indirect band gap, by the way. And then when you do the same calculation using tight bending with a, a, a cross section and one one zero zero direction, then you are very surprised to see that 
completely different band diagram, completely different band gap. It's becoming direct now. And uh, same thing, if you, um, if you change the orientation, if you add stress, uh, if you change the dimension, then you will see that for every single simulation, you have a different bind diagram. So um, back to TCAD, you cannot still use the TCAD tools, but it kind of means that for every single simulation you do, you have, you have to change something. And uh, well, it's not, it's not super practical. Um, and at the end of the day, that's one of the reasons that um, using a atomistic-like uh, 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 approach uh, is probably very beneficial for uh, advanced CMOS. But you have to pay the price because, again, we don't talk too much about simulation time, but uh, I mentioned it a little bit. I think uh, to, to, to make it uh, kind of clear, uh, hopefully, uh, couple of hours, it's typical on a TCAD side, and probably uh, um, the scale when you do atomistic is about 10, okay? So maybe a day or two or three to do a, a similar in, a, in atomistic uh, type of approach. Okay, um, so um, what are we doing uh, at Silvaco um, and um, what are we offering for, for this type of simulation? So we are partnering with Purdue uh, and and uh, and basically we we um, for quite some time now, um, and um, we have teamed up to uh, to create an atomistic uh, simulation solution uh, called Vitre Atomistic, um, and 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 uh, actually within Vitre Atomistic we 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 are combining a non equilibrium green function to calculate the transport with a tight bending. Okay. Um, from a, from a simulation time point of view, <clears throat> um, it's also important to mention that, um, well, when you do atomistic simulation, you can go uh, ballistic or you can, uh, or you can add scattering. And of course the, the simulation that time is very different, but uh, you know, here is just a, a simple illustration of, uh, of the time needed to do like a, a nanowire simulation the one, the one, the first thing to notice is the number of cores you have to use. Okay, so so again, atomistic simulation um, does require more resource, hardware resource than 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 a TCAD simulation. All right, um, I'll, I'll go very quickly on that. I wanted to say a few words on emerging memory, um, simply because again, uh, it's different physics. Okay, um, so we. We have been and we are working on um, a solution. Uh, it's available actually for resistive RAM. Okay, um, you know, um, usually um, that there is no, uh, there is, it's not usually there is no TCAD solution per se. Um, today, available are more like KMC or sort of simulation like atomistic, but it's very time consuming. So Silvaco, we decided to put something together. Um, here, the principle is, is uh, somehow uh, coupling the ion transport because VRAM is all about uh, oxygen vacancies and interstitial uh, moving around um, with, uh, with the electrical transport. So, um, so I want to say uh, many more than that, but um, this is a solution uh, available. And same thing for MRAM, uh, completely different physics um, and, um, and uh, actually exclusively 3D. Um, and uh, back to what I said in the introduction, you know, we, we are partnering a lot. Previously was uh, CLAT, this one is with TU Vienna, but uh, bottom line, we have a uh, resistive RAM and MRAM uh, TCAD simulation solution. All right. Um, so let's spend maybe five more minutes uh, uh, talking about uh, a new concept. And uh, talking about digital twin and machine learning and um, what do we do with them, okay? So let's start with a digital twin first. Uh, so what are we calling digital twins? So digital twins are virtual, virtual representation um, of components, of a component, a device, or even an entire production line in a factory. Um, it can be used to plan maintenance, uh, spot any emerging problems, and simulate the effect of upgrades or and designs changes. Okay, 
So Silvaco TCAD process simulation virtualizes manufacturing and uh, allow organization to maintain a digital twin of their, of their semiconductor process and help them optimizing their processes and predict failures, okay? Um, the, the proposed approach consists of a very accurate modeling of process itself. This, this is the concept of digital twin, having something that you can almost make no distinction between the virtuality and the reality. So that's why, um, you know, in this example of, let's say, somehow simulating an equipment, in that case, etching or deposition, um, the equipment properties are including in the simulation, in fact, uh, including like transport of particles from the reactor into the future scale domain. Okay. And with this in mind, uh, you can really, uh, using this uh, digital twin concept approach to optimize a specific process recipe, in that case, uh, a thin process, okay, for, for a fintech. And, um, and again, yield control is critical because, uh, as I mentioned, the, the, the fin is the key element of a fin pet transistor and the fin shape uh, drive, drives all the electrostatic of the device and, and, and then the performance, okay? So, so I think this uh, yield under control, uh, it's a huge plus because you have so many paramet uh, parameters to optimize uh, that running this, uh, you know, uh, in a fab will cost a lot of money and, and, and will take a lot of time, okay? So that's the digital twin concept. And then, and then at Silvaco, we have also, uh, we are also developing uh, a new tool um, with uh, extensive use of machine learning technique and AI, okay? Specifically designed for the semiconductor industry. So um, I don't want to spend much time on that um we can all read that but um you know uh, this is basically um uh, a tool where you can do multiple things of course you can visualize data you can do a uh, multivariate data analysis using a combination of neural network and uh, decision trees algorithm you can also input feature selection including outliers detection and data training and you can do obviously uh, because that's the purpose modeling optimization and use advanced doe all of this you know wrapped into some sort of python interface to uh, automate everything so application is are numerous you can do a lot of different things um you know uh, bottleneck identify bottleneck in manufacturing processes improve quality control reduce cost yield etc cetera, etc cetera. and with do with those two key elements uh let's say just to summarize this digital twin concept, which consists of doing a very precise, um, let's say process simulation combined with all these uh, new statistical technique. Then you end up with this uh, flow, uh, which we are calling a uh, 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 fab technology optimization flow. Okay, so uh, maybe just to summarize. So, so, so TCAD simulation, uh, you know, has been used for decades helping the development of new technologies, nothing new here. Um, this is usually done by uh, dedicated engineers, actually TCAD engineers. But in fact, um, we would like to uh, empower fab engineers by offering a solution um, that they can use uh, every day before deciding uh, what to launch in the fab, okay? So for that, we are building this flow, this fab technology co-optimization flow, where we combine uh, digital twin and machine learning and uh, really to uh, lower the cost of manufacturing speed TMM and LTK engineers to work directly with fab engineers to ultimately optimize process manufacturing and yield. And that's really uh, really the idea behind the scene here. And um, you can see the idea of digital twin technology, that's what is happening in reality. And, uh, and this solution is kind of uh, technology agnostic. So you can, you can do it for planar CMOS, for advanced technology, for memory technology and, and um, even for process, uh, specific process recipe, okay? So um, so this being said, um, jumping to, uh, to the conclusion to have a few minutes, maybe to have a discussion. So you have, you have seen so far that, uh, you know, uh, th there is uh, not a lot of uh, actually uh, 
provider of, uh, of a generic TCAT solution on the market. Uh, Silvaco is uh, obviously uh, one of them. And, and we have a long history of uh, delivering be best in class TCAT solution. Uh, we are growing, okay? And, um, and because we, we are growing, uh, we are also exploring uh, how we can uh, even be better. And um, we talked about that. Don't want to say uh, any more uh, thing on digital twin and uh, fab technology optimization, emerging memory. Something uh, maybe I didn't mention too much uh, is this uh, stress engineering and deformation. So, um, so today, one of the challenge we have, it, 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 it could have been in my slide uh, challenges in TCAD, but what people are doing or trying to do is that uh, part, of, part of the process, uh, especially for the memory market, when you pile up for those 3D NAND, like 100 plus layers, the, the, the etching deposition, the, 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 you have this, uh, this uh, stress that deformed the structure. So, so you, you, when you built your device, at the same time, you have you have a stress uh, and the structure deforms, but you still need to continue to to build on top, and that's a challenge from a, a, a TCAD perspective, and that's also something we are addressing. Okay. Uh, last but not least, um, I think it's worth mentioning that our solution is open, and can coexist with flows from competition. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Eric, for the great presentation. And we now have time for question and answer. Um, please type your questions in the Q&A uh, window, and I will ask them. Um, now, I have a quick question about um, the, so, so the tools that are now publicly available on NanoHub. Uh, which tools are available there? Which tools are limited to license holders and, 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 so, and things so, like that? So part of NanoHub, we, we are offering, uh, you have seen some, some name, uh, process simulation, victory process, device simulation, victory device. So, so th those are our uh, 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 latest and greatest. So we are, we are actually not offering the legacy tools, okay, on NanoHub. We are only offering uh, um, the, the last uh, generation, and of course, it comes with uh, UI. So, so as I was mentioning, so just to simply answer the question, uh, what is available in NanoHub is 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 what we develop every day. Okay. Great. So um, that's open publicly, and uh, everyone can use. That's that's a great resource. Um, now, for someone who is new to using these tools, uh, often it's much easier if they uh, take an example yes. and uh, tweak it to their yes. uh, purpose. Are those available that yes. people can start using? They are. They are. They are also available. Yes. Uh, any. Yes. We are. We are not distributing um, our tools without examples. So. Uh, mm -hmm. So. Uh, yes. Great. Um, I'm waiting to see if there are more questions. Um, and, and we have a small enough group. If people want to just raise their hand, we I can promote them to they could ask the question themselves. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Or they can Great. reach out to me afterwards. Not big deal either. Um. So uh, when you said uh, some of these TCAT two the TCAT uh, simulations can also be used in small circuit simulations, how small? You know, what are yes. the number of devices uh, that you're talking about? You know, from a, from a, from a device uh, um, simulation perspective, it's probably one or two elements. Okay, and now it could be including in a in, in a circuit uh, uh, where you have probably 10 to 100 uh, uh, circuit elements okay mm -hmm. so it's it's a it could be a ring oscillator it could be an end and or i mean it's, i mean it's like small circuit like that okay uh, it's it's usually it's usually very useful um in the display industry because because the, the circuit itself in the display industry is is relatively simple okay in a flat panel so you have a driving transistors you have led and 
have a couple of elements that that's the key pixel and that's that's why uh, they are used uh, mainly here okay so of course you cannot use that to to design a microprocessor of course <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, so it seems that um, the talk was quite clear and okay. there aren't uh, any questions. But people will uh, be able to reach out to you if they have yeah, yeah, no questions. Problem. And thank you very much for thank sharing you. with us your uh, your uh, insight and also for actually sharing the tools on a publicly available platform. Yeah. That's yes. a very big service for um, for this community. We really, we really appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you, day. Eric and Azad. Yeah. And uh, thank you to our attendees for joining. And uh, again, keep an eye on the NNCI events page for the next uh, NNCI webinar. And uh, have a good day, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.